Hey, what's up, YouTube? It is Melanie back with Melanie Loves Death Metal. And I went to a show on Sunday, uh, this past Sunday, like I've mentioned a couple times in my videos already. I went and saw Garia. I think that's how you say their name. At least that's how, it, that's what it sounded like when they set out on stage. Um, Black Braid and then Wolves in the Throne Room. So this was my first time ever seeing Wolves in the Throne Room. And I've seen Black Braid now twice and then Garia, this is my second time seeing them. And it was a fantastic show. Um, it was uh, a smaller venue, outdoor venue. If you're familiar with the Orpheum in uh, Tampa, you know that they've moved into a newer venue. It's, it's outdoors. It's, it's a little bit bigger than their last one. Um, and yeah, it was a really good show. I, I actually had the pleasure of meeting a couple people that watch my YouTube channel. So Jess and Kevin, thanks for, for hunting me down saying, hey, um, that was that was kind of a weird thing for me. I'm not used to that. That's, that's only happened one other time, uh, since I've started my channel. Um, so it was cool to meet you. Um, and hopefully I'll see, uh, some more people at the next show that I'm planning on going to, which is in November. It is the cattle decapitation, immolation, sangle sugar bog, and I'm missing another band, uh, tour. Um, I'm hopefully I'm going to be able to go to that. I don't know because November is a really rough month for me. Pretty much every single week and weekend, uh, there's something going on in my personal life outside of work, uh, whether it just be traveling and holiday stuff or just stuff with my kids. So we'll see. Um, hopefully I can go. But this show was fantastic. So uh, Gary uh, opened up. Um, I did not get there in time to see the opening band called Hoaxed. Um, so I'm not too familiar uh, what they sound like or who they were. I'd never heard of them before. Uh, so unfortunately, I didn't get there for them. But I did get there for Garia. Um, and just, man, I'm obsessed with this band. I'm just going to be honest with you right now. Uh, I recently, you know, just started re-listening to their albums that I already owned in my collection and just got hooked. As soon as I found out I was going to see them again, it's just been kind of an obsession. And they put on such a good show. Uh, they're very theatrical in what they, what they do on stage. And I really enjoy that in the sense that they, you know, they walk around, they do a lot of kind of dancing. The lead singer does a lot of dancing and gets really into it and just really interacts with the crowd and stuff. And it, it's a really good show. They sounded really good. Uh, they, they played like four or five songs. I think it was like five, maybe I can't remember. Um, I, I meant to go back and look at setlist.com to see if it was up yet. Uh, and yeah, it's, they sounded awesome. So they're known for like their gimmick of their hoods and like that's what they wear on stage and I don't know how they play like that honestly especially like it that's got to be hot on stage doing that um but they got lucky here in Florida it was in the 70s that night so that's that's chilly here um so they didn't have the super humid night where they were playing that uh but afterwards you know they're really they're a really cool group of guys they were just hanging out no hoods, so you got to see what they look like. They're, they don't really carry that demeanor off the stage. You know, a lot of other bands will stay kind of in their, their like, costume, gimmick, whatever they do. They don't do that. They, they pop the hoods off. They're walking around. They're at the merch table. They're over here. They're doing this. So it was pretty cool seeing that. Um, I did pick up two shirts for them, and then I picked up this. Uh, so I didn't own this already in, in my collection. I'm probably going to end up getting it on vinyl just because my other record, the other albums I have of them are on vinyl. But for now, I grabbed this because I had already spent too much money. <laughs> but I wanted to be able to at least have this for now. Uh, so this is their first full length that came out in 2018 um, on Season of Mist. And then this just recently got reissued into a digipack. Digi digi uh, it's a really nice digipack. And, you know, I don't really care for these at all, as you know. And I've said that hundred times, but I know that, I know that Season of Mist puts a little bit more of attention to detail into their, their releases with this kind of stuff. So that's why I, I didn't have a problem buying it. It also comes with a booklet with images of the band. God damn, that bird is loud. Um, holy shit, that bird is loud. Uh, and then the lyrics. So it's the end of the day here. I'm recording after I get off work and my, the windows are open cause it's in the seventies here and it's super nice out. So no AC, finally fresh air flowing through and just there's a bird directly outside my window being a loud as fuck of course um so yeah i really like this album you know it's pretty much more of a uh simplified sound of what what you hear on mirage and limbo uh, like they're really just really kicking it off here but that's still a suffocating black metal style that they have um, but i think more less a little bit less on this one but still 
a very good album. In fact, the last two songs on this, Catharsis and then Cycle of Decay, I just said that opposite, Cycle of Decay and then Catharsis, are some of the best songs I think that they've ever written. Uh, and that's this, that goes across everything that they've written. Uh, so I really like this album. I've been listening to it a ton. I listened to it on the way home after the concert because uh, I actually have a CD player in my car. Um, and I listened to it again today. So yeah, just kind of obsessed with this band right now. If you're not familiar, they're from Portugal. Uh, they flew all the way over here to go tour the U.S., which is cool. I'm glad that they didn't have any like uh, visa issues because sometimes that happens with bands like this. Uh, so it was a great show. I love this band. I hope I get to see them again live again. Um, I hope they do like a, a maybe more of a headlining tour where they can play a little bit longer. That'd be awesome. That's kind of like my my hope right now. So I hope that they are able to do that. But I do have their EP on order. There's another EP that came out on Everlasting Spew and then Season of Mist reissued it this past year. That's coming. I was going to get that at the show too, but I had already spent so much money. And at that point, I told myself I had to stop. <laughs> so this was the only physical format that I bought. Everything else was all t-shirts. I, I went ham on the t-shirts. And you're going to see that probably in the next several videos. Uh, today, I took advantage of the cooler weather and wore the long sleeve heavy, heavy metallurgy shirt. Again, which I'm going to link in the description. Uh, this is Mark Riddick's artwork that he did, especially for 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 heavy metallurgy so check them out uh also a clip of gary out at the show very small clip i don't want to get copywritten Um, next up was Black Braid. Black Braid was the second time I've ever seen them. Fantastic, fantastic live. I just got to say the one thing that I absolutely love about Black Braid, and I hope that, you know, John's watching this. He is a really cool guy, FYI. Um, his vocals are stellar live. Like, he, he just, man, they just sound so good. The whole band does as a whole, but... His vocals are really good. Like when you're listening to the album, that is exactly what you're hearing live. And they put on a really, really good set. The crowd seemed to be really, really like they started to fill in a little bit more for this. Uh, and I think people just, the crowd was amped. They were hyped. Um, the thing that I really liked about this show that I'm not used to because I'm just used to going to death metal shows is there were no, there was no moshing at all, at all. Um, and I don't mind that, obviously, like the last concert video that I made, I was in the pit, like I was right next to it. I showed you some some images or some videos of guys getting their asses handed to them in the pit and stuff like that. Like that stuff doesn't bother me. Uh, but this was a nice show to be able to just sit there, watch the band and really soak in what you were listening to. Uh, I really enjoyed that. This is pretty much the first time I've ever been to an all black metal show. So there was very like a strict like no moshing uh like limitation there there was one guy who was pretty inebriated he had a lot to drink and he was trying to do mosh during garia people were like fuck you stop it and getting mad at him to the point of where he tried to he tried to a little bit in black braid and some some guys got into his face and they started arguing and it was a little bit annoying because it, unfortunately it was going on during the show and then after but then they like they basically kissed and made up and it was fine by then um so that's cool metalheads can reel it in when they need to uh but yeah the no moshing thing was fun so black braid was awesome i got a ton of videos of them because i was more i was closer to the stage at this point when gary was done i moved up closer uh because i wanted to get um you know more into it then um unfortunately i wasn't there within enough time to do that for gary when they started playing um so i got some videos and there'll be a clip They were awesome. So I don't care what anybody says. I still like them. I don't feed into the drama that's 
people create around this band. They're fantastic live. And I need to get Black Braid 2 on vinyl. Right now I own them on tape and I own the first one on vinyl. I gotta do it. It's just I haven't been able to pull the trigger yet. It's pretty expensive vinyl, but that's because he has self-released everything. So it makes sense. He doesn't have the backing of the industry to help press these things. Although some people think that that's a lie, but you can fuck off. That's you're just you're just dumb. Um, but um, so yeah, I'm excited to see them again. I really hope that they come back. I hope that they have more of a headliner next time because I would love to see them play a little bit more. Um, and hopefully next time, the microphone that John uses picks up the the flute or whatever that is that he plays because my God, that some of the best stuff of the of the music that he plays, and just for whatever reason the sound system didn't get quite. At least not that I was able to hear. Maybe if you were farther back in the crowd, you could hear a little bit better. But unfortunately, it was pretty drowned out with everything else going on. So that was my only complaint about the show. But other than that, everything was fantastic. And then finally, Wolves in the Throne Room. Uh, they were spectacular. Uh, my biggest thing that I loved about them is that they used, with the limited space that they had, because it was a pretty small stage, they had a really nice background, like a backdrop of the candles and the banner and just the smoke and the incense. It, it had a really good, uh, like, ambience to it. It really set the mood for their music, and they sounded so good. The guitar tone was top-notch. The drumming was spectacular. Their vocals were so good like nothing sounded off and they added in the like synths of their music uh so they had like those sampling and stuff like in there and just it, it sounded so good they put on such a good show i was very impressed and to the point of where i absolutely cannot wait to see them live again they were they were spectacular so it was a really good show all around the bill was really good every single band was very entertaining um, and yeah, I'm really excited that I went. I'm glad that I went. It was a really good time. And we were done by 11 p.m. There's a pretty strict noise ordinance in that area where they can't go past 11. So I was home at a decent hour, but now I was amped up. So I was able to stay up for a little while after that. Um, I was, I went back, like I said, I listened to this on the way home. I pulled out, um, it's all the way over there. I pulled out a couple of my other Wolves in the Throne Room CDs, sat in my office and listened to it for a while. Um, and I am fully locked into the black metal now. Yep. I told you guys. I told you guys that was going to happen. I, it was going to go all year of just being completely obsessed with death metal. And then as soon as it gets a little bit chilly in Florida, the doom and the black metal comes out. <laughs> the death doom and the black metal. And that is pretty much all I've been listening to. So probably going to be seeing a little bit more on this channel. But this is really going to pick it up. I really, really like this album. It's not my favorite album of theirs. Obviously Mirage, I've said that is. Uh, but this is a very good debut. The EP that they have out is really good too. Um, I'll, I'm excited to get that. I, like I said, I just I just ordered it literally today, so I should probably have it sometime next week. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. So that's my review of the show. Let me know if you guys went to this tour. I think it's halfway over, so there's still got plenty more shows going on. Um, a couple of my friends saw some of the East Coast ones. I think there was New York they saw. They saw Philly, uh, and then uh, a couple of my friends saw them in Chicago too, and they said everything was good so yeah check them out if you're able to go definitely worthy of a show go see so that's all i have today and i will see you guys in the next one